Hello, people of God. Not to panic. We're still about to fly. Now we understand what September meant. I can now understand clearly that the Lord gave me that dream of September. There's no time left. Seven Septembers ago. Actually, he gave it to me on the last day of August. And after that, this is the 7th September. And we know what happened. There were elections on the 17th of the month matching the 7th King Donald Trump on a 73 years, 3 months and 3 days on a triple threes because of the importance of Donald Trump as the 7th King as reinstated in Jerusalem as the capital of Israel again. And also because there is no government after that election. On top of that, 70 nations gather and sacrifice a lamb reenacting the law and voiding, therefore, the grace of Jesus Christ. And now we understand clearly that that is that September that many people were given, including me. This is that September. We can tell how close we are and how much relevance of an election that took place and still have no government, as prophesied by the rabbi Jitzhak Kaduri, that there was going to be elections in Israel, and after that election, there was not going to be a government, and that was the coming of the Messiah. I believe the Lord has been speaking to us all alone in the blood moons, in the tetrad blood moons, Passover tabernacles, Passover tabernacles. The first resurrection took place in Passover. I mean, he's been pointing clearly to Passover and tabernacles. We already know what happened in Passover. Christ resurrected and many saints with him. And it is more likely now that we see the picture a little bit better that we are to resurrect in tabernacles. One thing that I learned years ago is that the menorah is to be lit by the outside in. So the Feast of Trumpets really never really rent the bell in my life. It never did. And now I am completely sure that we will not be living in October 1st. And we got a few details here. For example, it is the first month of their civil calendar and the third day of Tabernacles, which is the feast that Jesus went in in the midst of the feast. Jesus went into the Feast of Tabernacles in the midst of the feast. By mid-feast, he went in, meaning he was pointing that he was not going to that party yet. He wasn't going to the feast yet until mid-Tabernacles. Was he giving us a tip over there that he was actually picking us up in mid-feast of tabernacles. Now, people were given, several ladies were given 717th a couple months ago, and it is also 717th because it's the seventh month of the Hebrew calendar and the 17th day. So it's 717th and it's also 117th. Also, some people were given the 29th. In 29 days, on the 29th, well... It is also 29 days from the Israel election that has no government yet. And there was this lady that I think is, is valid to mention her, Bobby Costar, that had um, a message from the Lord when she was 15 that she wasn't going to see her 50th birthday. And... Her birthday was September 30th. But it happened that September 30th in 1969, when she was born, was the 18th day of the 7th Hebrew month. 
It was the fourth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And the Lord gave her recently, before all these days came in, that he was going to come in on the twilight of the day before her birth date, which is the 17th, the third day of Tabernacles. How convenient that is. Because her birth date happens to be Tishri, the 18th. And the Lord told her, I'm coming on the twilight before your birthday. So that is Tishri, the 17th. And in Hebrew calendar, the Lord is Jewish. He needed not to give her a message uh, in Gentile calendar because everything with the Lord, it's in codes and, you know, um, he's just hidden the day of the rapture and it kept us sick in God and it kept us, you know, searching. But really... If we see all the details that I'm going to present to you now, you'll realize that it is highly, highly possible that we do leave on the third day of Tabernacles because, first of all, it is the Lord that has been giving us tetra blood moons throughout the centuries that they all fall on Passover and Tabernacles. And we know that Passover has been fulfilled. Now, tabernacles, that could be our resurrection, resurrection first, rapture later. And it matches several things. For example, from the inauguration of Donald Trump, you got 8,000 days counting the end date. If we don't count the end date, we got 999 days, which is still a very significant number. But... Counting the end day, counting every day, we got 8,000 days. Now, from the triple seven winter solstice, remember that from May 14th, 1948, to the last winter solstice, we had 70 years, 7 months, and 7 days. We had a triple seven. And from that day, counting the end day, we got 300 days. I already did videos in the past about the 300 days and the triple seven how they are bound to each other in the Bible, how every time there was a triple seven and 300 days, there came salvation and destruction by the hand altogether. Well, we got that matchup right now. Not to mention that I had a dream a few months ago that it was a very short dream. The Lord came to me and said, he was smiling, and he said, I come in 15 days. Well, that is October the 16th. Now, if it's the twilight of Israel, it could be the 16th here, which is 15 days from Rosh Hashanah. And the Lord could have very well meant that. I come in 15 days, meaning 15 days from Rosh Hashanah. Or, it could simply mean that he comes on the 15th, because it's, it could be the 15th or the 16th. It is right there. And I don't think it's going to go any farther than that. If it doesn't happen like that, I will definitely jump all the way to uh, December. But right now... It's looking like the purpose was all alone to tell us that September was the last month to be complete, that it was the, the marker, the September that elections on the 17th of Elul, a tremendous significant date, was going to take place not only elections, but a government was not going to be able to be formed. And that a 70 nations sacrifice reenacting the law of Noah was going to be voiding the grace. That is what you do when you activate the law. You void grace. So it's a clear message. Grace is over. I think that 
we need to remain seeking God. We know that many, many of us are uh, going through several different trials, and that is tough. That the suffering is very is very intense, but you need to hang in there. You need to seek the Lord. You need to be on your knees. You need to be praying. You need to be seeking God, telling everybody because all those mockers, they will cry. And they will be able to tell, I mock this person and that person, but they were right. And if you don't tell them, their blood may be upon your head. So you need to tell them. Don't matter if they laugh. They're not going to be laughing too much when the rapture happens. Now, if you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ yet, you need to repent right now. And invite him into your heart. And say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Save me. I repent of my sins. I accept you as my only Lord and Savior. And I denounce idolatry and any other religion that is empty. Because only you died for me in the cross. Only you shed your precious blood that I may be safe today. Repent in the name of Jesus and be safe and escape the great tribulation that is about to start. Until next time, God bless you all. Shalom.